All right, so acute principles, uh, blood, IV fluids, and shock. Um, we start to incorporate IV fluids towards the end because they're priority to shock and uh, revascularization of a patient that has an acute principle, especially with trauma. All right, so sepsis, sepsis shock. Okay, so um, generally, you know, we're going to start with the person, right? So, I mean, that that's priority because the patient is septic, right? So, you know, an septic patient is an acute patient. So, we know they're going to be acute, and they're going to have problems um, with fluid and fluid volume. So, they're going to be from a, a normal volemic state, and then they're going to go to a a uh, hypovolemic state. So they're going to become vasodilated all in the peripherals out here. So all their alpha is going to be vasodilated. And that's a big deal because that's what this is all about. And this is where the rule comes in. You fill the pump before you squeeze. And we said that alpha acute, alpha squeezed upside down is vasoconstriction. And so you fill the pump then you squeeze. And this is all about vasoconstriction because in septic patients, they can't squeeze. And that's why it's such a big problem. So blood pressure is huge. So you're gonna be monitoring this patient's blood pressure. And actually you might even have an A-line in and you'll be monitoring that dichrotic notch. And that dichrotic notch is gonna give you your systolic and diastolic. And we'll be monitoring this for dampening. And, um, and if it's dampening, we're gonna be putting that patient on the on the semi so we're going to be looking at the phlebostaxis line, and we're going to be looking at that to make sure, because we really, really want to know what the blood pressure is. Because their blood pressures might be 80s on 40s, right, with low mean arterial pressures. You know, mean arterial pressures, they're going to be an acute renal failure. And what kind? Most likely it's going to be pre-renal. So we're going to be very concerned about that. So we're going to put a Foley in this patient, and um, we will monitor their urine output. And we're gonna be monitoring that urine output for 30 cc's an hour for 424 hours because our biggest concern is gonna be this pre-renal failure that the patient has in. So that's why we'll put an A-line on and that will be up in a pressure bag. And that pressure bag is gonna be acute because we need to continually monitor this dichrotic notch and make sure that we have a solid blood pressure running because that perfusion is everything that this urine is coming out now another thing too is so we'll also be doing a manual blood pressure we're going to put a line in them we'll have a foley in them um what else we're going to do the patient is probably going to be vented uh at this point and this ventilation is going to have an et cuff and we're going to check that cuff pressure right and that cuff pressure should be puff cuff 420 right so 20 to 25 and we're going to use a sphygometer for that to monitor this cuff pressure to make sure that it's painting and that those lungs are being perfused. And now that's easy because that ET tube, there might be a 75 at 23 cm's at the lip, right? And we're going to have some vent settings for this patient. We'll probably be in assist control mode, and that rate might be around 14 or something like that, 12, 14, 16, which is a normal respiratory rate because the principle is, is that this patient is hemodynamically unstable, but we're gonna handle their ventilations at this point. We're just gonna ventilate them and keep them going. So we're gonna make sure that they have a, a tidal volume, whatever their range is, 750, and then uh, FiO2. So we'll put them at 60%, and, and we'll put our PEEP on there. So we'll do a PEEP of five for this patient. So they'll be hooked up to this ventilator, and so we'll put this ventilator over here, and we'll be monitoring that ventilator. And we'll be monitoring that tubing, which we talked about for pressures, right? So high pressures is kinks in tubings, or disconnection, right? So this ET tube will be connected to that. And that VAT tube would be over to uh, suctioning as well. And that's going to pre prevent this patient that's now on a ventilator for sepsis from becoming aspiration pneumonia on top of it. So we'll put a VAP tube in there, we're gonna put an ET tube in there, and then we're gonna put an OG tube down there to, because the body's gonna be shunted. So we're gonna put them on life-saving protonics, so we'll definitely have a, an IV over here. But this patient's gonna to need to be fed because all these cells are 
now stopped, right? And they start to break down and they start to have this mass inflammation. That mass inflammation causes extreme vasodilation. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, a, put them up in TPN, right? So we'll probably put a triple lumen in. So let's throw that in here somewhere. So put a triple lumen in. And in that triple lumen, you're going to have three ports to that, right? So on that port we just talked about, we're going to put TPN in that, usually TPN proximal, right? So TPN and TPN will be up. And we need some sedation because they're going to be vented. So we're going to put some sedation up. We're going to put some propofol or something like that. Because they're on propofol, we don't need to give uh, lipids for this patient because propofol is lipids, right? So therefore, we're going to monitor this patient's um, <clears throat> lipid profile because the big risk is, is that triglycerides and their um, LDLs are going to become acute. So we'll monitor the cardiac enzymes as well because the risk is that they have an MI and we don't want that. So therefore, we're probably going to put them on, a, definitely going to have them on a monitor. And we're going to monitor that patient. And what we'll do is, is that um, we're going to be looking for ST depressions or even ST elevations. Now think about this. If this patient is on this monitor, and we're monitoring this patient and, and we can't see them saying, hey, I have chest pain right now, anything like that. So we're gonna be monitoring these enzymes over here because the risk is, is that this patient has a myocardial infarction while on it because they're on propofol, right? So, I mean, that's something that we don't want. And also, remember we said, we're gonna fill the pump before we squeeze. So it's gonna be pump, 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 pump. So it's gonna cause a lot of stress onto that heart. It's gonna cause a lot of problems with that. So, so we need to monitor that. So how do we monitor? We monitor the enzymes over here, but we're probably going to put a swan in them as well because the problem is, is like, how do we monitor the hemodynamics? So we'll put a swan in them, which we're going to put down here, and then we're going to monitor their CVP readings, right? So we get their CVP, which is the <laughs> CVP, which is the uh, peripheral, right? So we're going to fill the pump before we squeeze. So they might be less than four. And so we're going to increase the fluids because we want their range to be higher. Right? We're also going to be, which we're going to monitor the cardiac output, and we want that cardiac output to be four, four to eight. That's, we're going to float a swan into this, into the pulmonary artery, which is going to give us our pulmonary artery wedge pressure. And that pulmonary artery wedge pressure should be eight to 12. So we said that the patient's going to be really dry, so it'll be less than eight so we're going to try to keep them in that sweet spot of eight to twelve because we're not really sure where they're going to be get another line over here if we can fit it in maybe a, a 22 is stuck near the wrist uh we're monitoring the vent for peak pressures we are monitoring their a line over here and um we got their bp cuff still running every 15 minutes because so we're going to generally hold heparin. We're going to be concerned about that because the risk of bleeding is priority. So because of that, we're going to put some SCDs on them. Um, if we question that the patient is throwing a clot, of course we're going to check their, um, their BMP. That makes sense, right? Because the fluids are going to be all over the place. I'll be up and down potassium because we're probably going to put this person on a Lasix drip if this person's uh, pre-renal isn't in renal failure yet. So we might even actually put them on a LASIK strep or a Bumex strep just to keep them going. Where would we put that? I don't know if it's compatible over here. So I might put another line in over there. So I'll monitor the chloride and CO2. That's going to be all over the place. The BUN I'm always monitoring because that's going to be high. Hopefully they're not in renal failure yet because I'm going to be looking at their GFR down here. And that GFR, you know, if it drops less than 60, that's going to be a Q. Glucose is going to be all over the place. This patient is going to be on mass steroids um, because of inflammation. Um, CBC, of course, the white count is going to be elevated. So I'm going to look down to the differential because that differential is going to tell me how well is this patient monitoring. So that's going to be elevated 18, whatever it was before, 28,000. H and H, well, as the patient has this bleeding that's going on, remember the vessels, all those vessels are all irritated. And because they're all irritated, they take a lot of clotting factors. And that goes back to this over here. And this clotting factor is all start to eat up is that this patient's platelets start to go down. And so this patient will start to bleed and go into its DIC. So we'll monitor that H and H because of that problem. We're also going to be monitoring the calcium and mag 
because the patient is going to be on these diuresing and they're going to be diuresing, they're going to be getting lipids, and we're going to monitor their phosphorus as well because as they go into acute renal failure, where they're at risk for hypophosphatemia, which means that the patient will start to go down. In addition, we're going to monitor their liver enzymes, and the reason we'll monitor their liver enzymes is um, their AST and then their ALT, and the reason we're going to monitor that is because of when we talked about these lipids over here from the propofol and also the problems with mean arterial pressure. Because as a person starts to hypoperfuse, they start to have more problems and you start to see organ failure. So we're always trying to prevent multi-organ failure from happening. And so while we're at it, because they're going to be on this, we're going to make sure that we're going to do a... Um, an ABG. So that ABG will be monitored and we'll be monitoring that pH and that pH will be low because of acidosis because it is so acidotic because of all this problems over here. And so we'll be continually monitoring that every single day. Luckily we have an A line to do that from because otherwise we'd be keeping on having to pop them here, pop them here, pop them here. And so we couldn't do that. All right, so what else are we missing? Uh, antibiotics, right? That makes sense, right? Because they're in sepsis. So we would need to have some sort of antibiotics. Well, where would I put them? I don't know. You know, I would have to check compatibility. So maybe I put them on some heavy-duty Vanco, right? So, well, that's a level medication, so I need to make sure I know the levels there. So we know it's 10 to 20, and I'll assess that level, and I'll have to check those liver enzymes again, right? Um, but that's probably not going to help because I need to do – broad spectrum, so they're probably on farting flaggle on top of it because of, I'm going to wipe them out on their whole GI flora. So I'm going to throw up flaggle. Flaggle doesn't like anything, so maybe I, maybe I have an open line at certain times and I'll give flaggle here and then I'll throw that up and so I put the flaggle up there. But how's the patient doing? That's the biggest concern. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out, right? So do I even know where they're at, right? Well, let me put a bis on them. You know, I could do that. You know, I could check their their brain. So I'll put a bis on them. And that's how I can monitor them. And we talked about that before. So now they're going to start to really blow up because I give them so much fluids and everything like that. So um, hopefully their renal – so they're going to need some um, – some vasopressors. I forgot the vasopressors, so I'm going to put those up. And so those vasopressors, so I'm going to put level fed, level fed, leave them dead, right? That's acute. And definitely some neo, maybe hopefully that's compatible. I put that aside over here in between the flaggle. So I'll put that neo up and I'll be monitoring that. And then I can kind of go from there. Um, well, they're going to be really clamped down, so pulses are going to be a big issue because that fluid they're going to fill up and everything like that. So I'm going to mark their feet. So I'll be checking their pulses with Dopplers every once in a while. They'll probably be definitely, you know, then I, oh, yeah, so I, I get the uh, vasopressors up. Well, maybe their cardiac output's really starting to drop, right? So I need something that's going to pump that, like uh, dobutamine. So I'll hook that up here. That has to go from a central line as well. Um, so I'll put that dobutamine up there, and then I'll have to monitor that. Yeah, that's about it. All right, so that's a septic patient.